So if we want to show that these vectors are perpendicular, we'd like to show that these product, these vectors um, dot product is zero. So first we have to create these big nasty vectors and then we'll dot them and hopefully it'll be zero. So to create the vectors uh, matrix A times A, they've got it shown here, matrix A times A and then matrix A times B. And when we multiply matrices, you can do a little review of multiplying matrices. You're going, uh, we just check to make sure it's possible. This is one big term here. Oh, no, no, it's not. This is, sorry, this is two cosine theta and minus sine theta. So this is a two by two matrix, two rows, two columns. This is two rows, one column, two times one. So the middles do match, so this is possible. And our answer will be a two by one matrix, which they have here, a two by, and this, these are just one big chunky term. So they're getting that one, these terms by um, multiplying, or basically dotting this row with this column. So it's um, cosine theta a times a1 uh, plus negative sine theta times a2. So this is cosine theta times a1 plus or minus negative, uh, I can talk, <laughs> so plus a negative, so basically minus a2 times sine theta. So this is all one thing. Uh, over here, we have the same thing going on this guy with this guy. So it's sine theta times a1 plus cosine theta times a2. So sine theta times a1 plus cosine theta times a2. This is one big chunky thing. Uh, they did it again here, so if you didn't catch it the first time, we'll do it again. This is uh, b1 cosine theta plus a negative b2 sine theta. So b1 cosine theta plus a negative b2 sine theta. And then same thing, uh, b1 sine theta plus b2 cosine theta. So big chunky things. These are kind of... Uh, just chunkier versions of normal matrix multiplication. So if that looks weird, you can take a look at ma normal matrix multiplication and go, okay, this is the same thing, it just looks a little funny. And so now they're going to take these two guys, this AA and AB that we created, and they're going to dot them. And all that means is that they're going to multiply the A's together, or multiply the X values together, and multiply the B's together, and add them up. So what they're doing is, huh, okay, what have they got here? Uh, they wrote it a little, a little fun, but, okay, so if you multiply the x values together, the a1 cosine theta minus a2 sine theta times the b1 cosine theta minus b2 sine theta, you're getting a1 b1 cosine squared theta uh, minus a1 b2 sine theta. Ah, here we are. Sine theta cosine theta, right? So they're just foiling and then minus a2 b1 cosine theta sine theta and then plus a2 b2 sine theta sine sine squared theta because it'd be sine times sine. So that's where that top line is going for. So that's the x's multiplied together and then they have a big basically plus the y's multiplied together. So when they did a1 sine theta plus a2 cosine theta times b1 sine theta plus b2 cosine theta. They just foiled this out and put it on this second line here. So that's a1 b1 sine squared theta plus a1 b2 cosine theta sine theta plus a2 b1 cosine theta sine theta uh, plus a2 b2 cosine squared theta. Awesome. So yay. That's our dot product, multiplying the x terms of these vectors, multiplying the y terms of these vectors, and summing them up. 
And so now when you do this, you can collect a bunch of like terms. Let's see what they found here. So, or a lot of things actually go away, right? A1, B2, cosine theta, sine theta. A1, B2, cosine theta, sine theta. This one's minus, this one's plus. They go away. A2, B1, cosine, sine. A2, B1, cosine, sine. This one's negative, this one's plus. They go away. Uh, then you notice that you have A1, B1, cosine squared plus A2, B2, cosine squared. Those are different, so they write them there and there. And then these last two terms, A2, B2, sine 2 squared, and A1, B2. So we've got everybody here. And then they notice, like, hmm, we got this cosine squared theta plus sine squared th theta thing happening. So they wrote the ones with the A1, B1 together so that they could factor out the A1, B1. And then you'd have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which equals 1. And then they did it the same thing here for these two terms. They factored out the A2, B2, and we're left with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which we know as our trig identity equals 1. It's one of our Pythagorean trig identities. You don't need to do a lot with it in this particular test, um, but if you take the third subtest, that's going to come up a ton. Uh, and it's good to know it's, uh, it's your main Pythagorean identity kind of comes from your c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So if you're on a unit circle, then 1 will equal x squared plus y squared. So 1 will equal cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Little sidetrack, but okay. So hey, so we got the a1, b1 plus a2, b2. a1, b1 plus a2, b2. And that's what this dot product equals. So it's like, well, we were hoping that it equaled 0, right? That was the goal to show that uh, uh, that these vectors are perpendicular and therefore their dot product is zero. And we got this mess here. But we do know that this mess should equal zero because uh, a1, b1, and b1, because <laughs> vectors a and vector b are perpendicular, that's a given. So if they're perpendicular, their dot product is zero. So a1, b1, uh, the x is added together plus the y is added together should be zero. And ah should be zero. And that is what we wanted to prove. Ha! Ah, so just what you always wanted to know. Uh, so the main idea is just that if things are perpendicular, their dot product is zero. M matrix multiplication, big messy dot products. Simplify, simplify, simplify. This guy here equals 1 from your Pythagorean identities. And there you have it. Lucky you.